Hey all you beautiful people, welcome to the Yucatan. This trip we're hanging out in Aquamal, which is a little south of Cancun in the Mexican Riviera. The water here is unbelievable, absolutely clear blue. Beautiful, beautiful beaches. It's really nice to get away from winter for a little bit. This is a family vacation, so we get to travel a little bit in the lap of luxury. There's mom coming out to see the sunrise. We have a little beautiful little beachfront Airbnb in Aquamal that is quite lovely and can hold our whole family. 11 people on this trip so you'll see various random people coming in and out of the video that's my family We are cruising through Aquamall right now just had some wonderful lunch and are checking out all the murals in the town I need to give a shout out to Takiera El Taco Maya for the best tacos I've ever had. The buildings in Akumal Pueblo are graced with some of the most amazing street art. You can wander around discovering the art on your own, or you can take a street tour and learn more about the art and the artists behind it. Next stop is some snorkeling in Akumal Bay. We had a great time snorkeling at Yalkul. It's a little lagoon area that feeds into the ocean and you can swim around with all the fishes. <laughs> it's a pretty nice little area to go snorkeling. Tons of fish. The current is a little strong when you get close to the ocean. So you definitely want some fins. But they rent them here. They rent snorkel with the masks and snorkels here. No problem for about 600 pesos you can get snorkel fins, life vests, which is required for good reason, and have a good time. You can stay here all day if you want. We came later in the afternoon, hoping to avoid the tour bus crowds, and I think we were successful. After our taco brunch in the Aquamal Pueblo, we headed down to the beach for a late lunch at La Buena Vida, otherwise known as the Pirate Bar. What do you have to say for yourself? Well, I think I chose wisely for lunch. I think you did too. Another day, another adventure. We all piled in the car for a road trip. Cruising through Tulum, the main drag is lined with really cute bars and fancy resorts. But our destination was a bit further down the road. We just had a great lunch in Tulum, and now we're headed down the road to Punta Allen. Really wishing I had my Jeep right now. We've just stopped at the visitor center for the Cyan Con and I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing that right, Bio Reserve, and walking down a little path, which I'm pretty sure is gonna take us out to the bay. We'll find out when we get there. Beautiful, beautiful bay behind us. Driving down the road to Punta Allen, there's a lot of places to just pull off and go walk to the beach or walk to the lagoon side. And this is a beautiful, beautiful beach that we are stopping in right now. This is an amazing stretch of beach and there's hardly anybody here. I wish I brought my towel. The road to Punta Allen is a dirt road that can be impassable in wet weather, but it was a dry day and we didn't have any problems in our rental car. The views along this 30 mile dirt road are spectacular and there are plenty of places to pull off and check out the beach or the lagoon. We have made it to Punta Allen and it is really beautiful here. We have a restaurant with a view right on the ocean. This is our beautiful Caribbean behind us. I think so far this is my favorite place in Mexico. It is a really cute little town back here, teeny teeny town in the middle of nowhere. Took a long time to drive the road back here, but 
that's mainly because my brother was driving and he's really extra cautious. I would have gone a bit faster. We're about to have some lunch at a little restaurant here, a little seafood restaurant. And it's right on the water. We are, this is our view from the restaurant. And that is just amazing. We're making dinner at home tonight and one of the wonderful things about Mexican grocery stores is hot, fresh tortillas. Oh, so happy. We're gonna make a, be making a little dinner for the family tonight. Jalapeno poppers, tacos, fried plantains, little Mexican corn on the grill, and celebrating my dad's 80th birthday, which is pretty awesome. We are at a lovely rustic remote location to eat at Chamino's restaurant. It's supposed to be pretty good. Map Chicks recommended it, so we're gonna check it out. This place is great. Mom and Dad taking their seats. It's just a bunch of tables on the beach and the beach is lovely. This is the view from our table. It doesn't suck. So many of our adventures and travels are about food. Those two back there are where we got our love of food from. On this trip we have breakfast and then second breakfast and then lunch and then dinner, there's dessert and uh, lots of food. And fortunately in Mexico the food is generally amazing. And the view here, in addition to the food, cannot be beat. I mean, check that out. We're headed to the Zona Archaeologica de Tulum, and they've got to run the gauntlet of people selling crap to get into the park and to see the ruins, but we shall make it without buying a lot of crap. Last time I came to Tulum, we walked up the long, dusty road to the ruins, and I think it's worth the dollar to take this little bus up there. The pre-Columbian Mayan ruins at Tulum are situated on a cliff overlooking the Caribbean. It can be crowded and hot here. I recommend bringing plenty of water and a sun umbrella. But it is a spectacular sight and shouldn't be missed if you find yourself in the Yucatan. We have made it to the Tulum selfie spot. It really is pretty and it's like this little spot was just tailor-made for taking your selfies. There are iguanas crawling all over the place and they are such cool critters. We saw one big old guy back there that was missing a leg and missing his tail. The park rangers called him the, the last alpha. I think he probably was. But they're actually, they're really cool to, they're really cool to watch scamper around these ruins. Neat critters, little prehistoric kiddos. There are signs everywhere telling people not to feed the Cotamundis. But obviously these guys have been well fed and they have no fear of humans. We got up at Odark 30 this morning and are heading on a boat to go fishing. Smile Dad, you're on the boat, go fishing. <laughs> In Mexico. We booked a tour with Pescamaya Fishing Guides, who took us out for an all-day fishing adventure on the Cian Con Bio Reserve. Dad's the real fisherman. I'm just learning, but I still managed to hook a few fish. Even caught myself a snook. Mangrove snapper! That's the starter fish. <laughs> the starter fish. Next up is exploring the Mayan ruins at Coba. You can actually climb the tallest temple here, which is really cool, though somewhat precarious. We climbed up a whole bunch of steps to get to the high temp top of the high temple uh, to hang out with all these people. Climbing up is not too bad, uh, but I know from experience that climbing down is uh, not as fun. The footing's really bad, but if you zigzag down like this it's much easier than if you try to go straight down hanging onto the rope 
See that rock there that says Prohibido El Paso? It didn't used to say that. Last time I was here, I took pictures on top of that rock. It is a great picture spot. So, sorry, all future visitors. After walking around Coba this morning, we got a great lunch at Tacos Mexicano, uh, just outside of Coba. And it was very inexpensive and good food. It's not as touristy here. Um, even though we're right at a tourist area, um, the locals, in order to get to Coba, you either have to take a bus or rent a car, and not that many people rent a car. So it's not quite as developed as a, a major tourist area. Local tourists, Spanish tourists, are, are probably more commonly coming in car and able to stop at a restaurant. But Tacos Mexicano, it's good and cheap. <laughs> We're on video. We may wreck the car. But these are our Russian friends and our French friends we met on the side of the road. <laughs> Hola, Mexico! The Yucatan has thousands of cenotes or underground rivers. Many of these are open for swimming and cenote hopping is a great way to beat the heat. That is cenote chuha behind me. It's a totally underground cenote. It's a hundred pesos to get in. It's really not very crowded compared to most cenotes, even though at this immediate moment there's a, a number of people here. It's really cool. Water's not as cold as some of the cenotes I've been in. It's a good place. We're checking out the west side of the Siangkan Reserve today and there's some ruins behind us. We're at Moil, and we're going to walk around here a little bit, little small ruin area, and then we're going to catch a boat into the couple of lakes and up some Mayan canals. Wandering through Moil, you get to walk through this really neat jungle trail. I really like it. I wouldn't mind hiking an actual trail like this. This is just a short walk from one ruin to the other, but this is a neat, full, full canopied area, pretty much. If you look up, you can't see the sky. After a little bit of tromping through the jungle, we went up and actually asked for some directions. And as it turns out, the path to the lagoon, where we're gonna get a boat, is behind the Castillo, which is the largest structure in Moyil. Super easy to find if you remember where it is. We have made our way back this trail to the Sian Khan Bio Reserva. There's another 50 peso entry fee to get in here and you get to walk back this cool little boardwalk back to the Laguna. We have climbed up this kind of janky observation tower. Has a beautiful view. What goes up must go back down. It's kind of pricey at about 650 pesos per person, but getting to float down the crystal clear waters through the mangroves was well worth it and should be on every traveler's Very bucket list. Channel just pulls you down. We're just floating down this little <laughs> channel in uh, the mangroves. It's got a pretty strong current. I mean, it's just, you would have to fight against it a little bit to go the other way. Uh, <laughs> it's pretty cool though. The water is beautiful. How's the river? Very warm, very pretty, and lots of fishes. What do you think? I'm just happy to be here. <laughs> we are currently double parked behind three other cars in front of us that are also double parked. Plus, oh, our dude who was double parked behind us is no longer 
behind us. But we had an ice cream emergency and uh, so needed to go get some ice cream. So Dad and Matea are out getting ice cream while we're hanging out at Double Park. I don't actually know what the rules are on double parking in Mexico, whether we are doing something illegal or not, but since there's three people double parked in front of us as well, I'm not too worried about it. Right there is an ice cream place. The driving rules in Mexico seem to be pretty much, if you're going to do something hazardous, dangerous, or inconvenient for some other person you put on your hazards. So we're double parked, but we've got our hazards on, so I, it's socially, it's probably not legal, but socially acceptable here. All too soon, it's time to board the plane and head back home. Mexico is one of my favorite places to visit. I hope I get to come back many more times to explore this beautiful country. Immigration here in Denver, no matter your final destination, I have arrived home to Denver, and I want to go back to paradise. See you, hopefully see you soon, Mexico. Get the wall, but go ahead and do your thing. We've got you now. Akumal! Akumal! Might work better. Akumal!